This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine and welcome to JSA TV. With us today, we have Mr. Alec Gilner. Alec is the SVP of Cloud and Strategic Sales for Light River. Alec, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks for having me, Dean. You bet, you bet. So Alec, we're gonna just jump right in here. Now, I know that you recently joined the Light River team as their SVP of Cloud and Strategic Sales, but why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about um, your past experience and ultimately what brought you to Light River? Yeah, sure. First, very happy to be at Light River. I think we are, uh, and if you look at the optical space and, and what we do, I think uh, A, we've been around the longest, uh, B, we have probably more expertise than anybody else uh, in, in the industry. Uh, but a little bit about me, been in telecom all my life. I started my career as an outside plant engineer at Bell South uh, while I was a college, uh, a co-op student at Georgia Tech. Uh, you can also count my time bagging groceries at the local supermarket in high school, if you like. <laughs> Just having a little fun. Um, anyway, I uh, continued with Bell South in various engineering and planning degrees or planning functions for about 10 years. After that, I thought it would be pretty good to branch out into the hardware side of the business. Uh, my first stop was Nortel. Uh, I was responsible for selling transport and access products. Uh, and then I decided to try a couple of startups. First one being Redback Networks, you might remember them. Uh, key focus there was how to efficiently connect consumers to the internet. Uh, they were also a very early uh, packet optical believer. After that, I went to a couple other optical startups, one being Movaz Networks. We were acquired by Adva Optical. Second to that, I uh, went to BTI Systems, the kind of the first to target uh, the data center interconnect market for transport. Uh, and we were ultimately acquired by Juniper Networks, where I stayed for a few, a few years and ran an optical uh, overlay sales team for North America focused on optical solutions and business transformation. Uh, all of these companies, you know, gave me a broad range of exposure. An uh, important thing, even though some of it was 20 years ago, the technologies, you know, that I was exposed to were really all required, you know, for today's customers. Uh, that includes tier one, two service providers, MSOs, CLEC, uh, the hyperscalers or the smaller uh, DC plays. Uh, and of course, federal government and, and unis. I've pretty much sold, you know, to everybody out there with the exception of Enterprise. Um, you know, I think, you know, the value that I bring to Light River is this broad exposure uh, to customers, large and small, and having sold products all the way from layer zero through layer three brings uh, pretty good value to Light River. And that's what excites me. I think, uh, I think I can do good things here. And, uh, on the other end, I think Mike and Glenn uh, were kind of getting tired of competing against me, so they had to take me off the market. <laughs> that's that's hilarious, Alec. And honestly, I mean, you're you're yeah. name dropping kind of the the who's who in the optical space and beyond that, obviously. So bringing you to the yeah. the Light River team was probably a no brainer for uh for the execs there. But let's talk a little bit about Light River now. Um, uh, you guys have a you know factory built network solution, and it offers a great deal of of value to the industry. Why don't you talk to our viewers a little bit about that network and about the value that it brings? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a truly unique service uh, in, in the industry. I haven't seen anything like it before. Um, you know, if you go back in history, one of the greatest inventions during the Industrial Revolution was the creation of the assembly line. Uh, we've taken the same approach here at, at Light River. It might sound silly, but factory built uh, is just what the name implies. This is where we take dedicated experts and they complete a single task or one or two tasks uh, mm -hmm. on the assembly line uh, throughout the factory built network process. The point being that, you know, they're experts in their field for what they do. So A, they do the job well, and B, they do it efficiently. All right, it has the added, the added benefit, you know, if you're in a controlled environment, the factory with standby resources and extra material on hand in the event something goes wrong, um, you know, you can't, uh, you, you can't account for this if you're in the field. 
right? So if you compare this to the traditional model of having a couple of field techs working in the field until three o'clock in the morning trying to meet an SLA, and then they run into a failed part, they don't have the right test equipment, they've got bad or dirty fiber jumpers, unexpected fiber quality, you know, and you've got the guys a thousand, you know, a thousand miles away from the home office and from all their support resources, uh, you can see that they might not exactly be set up for success. Okay. So, you know, if you go with the factory built uh, network process, I don't think, you know, there's any comparison in the end, um, you know, and a factory built network cuts the installation time in half, re reduces you know, the time on site, so the customer has fewer maintenance windows and escorts required to manage. You know, so overall, you know, it's a more timely installation and results in a higher quality installation as well. And, you know, the additional benefits to the customer go beyond that. Uh, you know, first, you know, if we can turn the network up more quickly, then their time to revenue generation is accelerated. And, you know, and ultimately, with a network like this, the customer probably spends half of its own internal management time to manage that pro to manage that project. You know that's cut in, in half as in what as well, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so since you know since the live network is up and running in the factory, you know we have the added benefit of being able to pre-provision the network, and the customer can actually come in and be trained live on the actual network that they're going to be operating in the future. Well, thank you very much for that, Alex. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about any recent uh, projects or any new developments that you're working on there at Light River? Yeah, certainly, Dean. Um, you know, first and foremost, uh, we must provide real value to our customers to remain relevant to them. Their requirements are constantly changing uh, due to both changes, A, in their business model, uh, and B, just in the accelerating technology introduction, the choices put forth in front of them, you know, it seems like there's, there's something new, you know, every three to six months, and that has to be evaluated. Um, you know, the hardware and software platforms required to support these changing demands are changing too. Think what they're doing at the cell site now. They're deploying cell site routers. In the optical space, you've got FlexGrid. You've got white box solutions with open software. SDN and NFD, and then of course orchestration. Uh, you know, these really are not just buzzwords. Successful companies are finding ways to implement these, uh, you know, in, in their business model. And as a result, they're driving down costs and they're being more responsive to customers. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not easy, it's complicated. And what makes Light River different, in my opinion, is our, is our broad range of multi-vendor uh, you know, engineering expertise. Uh, we do business with, you know, most major, major hardware providers with uh, several white box providers. And, you know, we have over 50 uh, plus degreed engineers on staff. All right. So my goal at Light River, at Light River is to become a trusted partner uh, to each of our customers. And, you know, the customers that I want to target are the ones that are running lean, uh, either in operations or engineering. And, you know, if you look at the financials of these companies, the CFOs and, you know, the, the business community and the stockholders are, are demanding that they shrink, you know, as a percent of each dollar of revenue, that they shrink that operations and that CapEx cost, okay? So, you know, if the teams are running leaner, I'd like to establish Light River as that trusted partner that can allow the companies to focus on what, you know, their core business model is and what they do best, and then let Light River take the rest. So, you know, it's really migrating to, you know, it's a solutions and a consultancy, and that's where I'd like to take Light River moving forward. I love it, Alec. And I can't thank you enough for your time this afternoon. I feel like we could probably have uh, taken the entire afternoon to Certainly. chat. Uh, but thanks for being with us today. I appreciate it. Certainly. Thanks for inviting me. Have a good day. You got it. You got it. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon.